corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Preferred dividends in arrears calculation. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, you're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon left-hand side, the practice problems, then down in the 1728 preferred dividends in arrears calculation. Note, if you're using OneNote, take a look at the immersive reader. Our practice problems will also be down in the text area. Same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, we have our information up top. We're going to go through the calculations on down below. We're focusing in on the preferred stock. Remember, as we're thinking about preferred stock as compared to the common stock, the preferred stock will typically need to have the dividends paid first to the preferred stockholders before they are going to be paid then to the common stockholders. That's going to be the general type of scenario. That's the preferred component or one of the preferred components about being a preferred stock versus the common stock. What's going to be the benefit on the common stock side of things, on the common stock side of things, if dividends are greater or go up, if they're having a good year, then the increase in the value of the company as well as the dividends that might be distributed could go up for the common stockholders, whereas on the preferred stock side of things, they will typically be limited to the agreed amount that will be paid per year. So typically, if things go bad, you're on you'd rather be on the preferred stock side of things because you're more likely to get paid in the bad times. If things are going good, you expect growth, you'd like to possibly be on the common stock side of things because then as the growth happens, the dividends might go up. So your dividends may increase. And you you might get of course value in the company. So the value of your stock then could go up. So if the dividends are not paid, then typically what will happen is they will accumulate upwards. So a company could decide not to pay dividends, but if doing so, then they can't really pay the common stockholders until they pay off the preferred stockholders is the general concept of it. And the dividends accumulate up that up uh, if they are not paid for the for the preferred stock, which is going to be the dividends in arrears that we'll basically calculate here. So we have the preferred stock. We're going to say the annual dividends per share is going to be nine. Has not uh, paid dividends for years five. So we haven't paid the dividends at all for five years. And if we haven't paid the preferred stockholders any dividends, then we haven't paid the common stockholders because we generally have to complete the preferred stock obligation before paying the common stockholders. Now the common stockholders being the owners of the of the company and having, you know, voting rights and whatnot could be angered by that, you would think, if if there's gonna if they're not able to get access to any any dividends after a long period of time. So action might then want to be taken at some point uh, if the dividends are piling up and not being paid off to the preferred stockholders here so that the common stockholders could possibly get access to some dividends at some point. So the preferred stock outstanding, we're going to say are 300,000. The common stock outstanding, we're going to say are the 600,000. And the next year, earnings after taxes, we're going to say are 10 million and earnings paid to the preferred stockholders. So then we're going to try to pay off the earnings. So in other words, we'll first calculate the dividends in arrears that have been filing up. Uh, and then we'll think about the next year and they're going to try to pay down some of the dividends with the earnings that have been made in the following year. So let's calculate the dividends in arrears. And this is kind of a funny term. It might be called the dividend uh, arrear age as well when you're talking about the dividends that have been accumulated upwards. And some people will just call it the preferred stock dividend calculation, the accumulation or something like that. So just be aware you might hear different terms for the dividends, but the general idea is the preferred stock dividends will be accumulating upwards. So we got the annual dividends per share, nine. And then we got the preferred st uh, stock outstanding for the preferred stock, 300,000. So we'll just take that nine times the 300,000. That would be the 2,700,000 obligation for the preferred stock dividends for the company that needs to be paid out before you can pay any dividends to the common stockholders. Not only that, but if you decide not to pay the dividends at all, or you pay some amount less than this, then the general rule is that you can't pay anything to the common stockholders till you pay the whole amount and it will accumulate upwards uh, until you pay it off. So you cannot pay it off, but you can't really get rid of it that way. So then we're going to say the years uh, not paid, it's been five years. That's going to be our starting point. 
So now we've got 2,700,000 times five, which is 13,500,000 that is owed to the dividends for the preferred stock. And once again, this could anger the common stockholders you would think after some time, because at some point they would like to have access to dividends too, and they need to get these paid off before that would be the case. So now we're gonna say that the next thing that's gonna happen is one more year passes. So we'll do the same calculation for one more year. And remember this, this bottom line, we could call it preferred dividends in arrears, or we could call it dividend arrear age or something like that or you could just call it the preferred dividends that have accumulated for five years which i think is you know more common english that might be used uh sometimes so now we'll say one more year has passed so we'll do the same calculation for six years and then they're going to say that the next earnings that they had they're going to try to pay off pay this off so then we're going to apply this out and see where we stand after they pay off the 10 million of the earnings for the dividends that have been accumulating. So we're, we're going to do the same starting point. We've got the annual dividends per share are nine. We have the preferred stock outstanding, the 300,000. Nine times the 300,000 is going to give us the 2,700,000. And we say now there's six years because another year has now passed. That's going to give us then the preferred dividends in arrears or the dividend ar arrear age or the accumulation of the preferred dividends that has not been paid for six years is going to be the six million or sixteen million two hundred thousand we're going to pay off the ten million so if we calculate where we stand after that point in time we got the preferred dividends and arrears the accumulation the sixteen two million two hundred thousand sixteen million two hundred thousand minus the ten million that's going to give us the six million two hundred thousand that still uh, needs to be paid off once again needs to be paid off the rest of it before you could basically pay any more dividends to the common stockholders that's the general concept